5. Are 9 out of 10 professors unfit? The newspapers carried a front-page story entitled 1 out of 10 physicians may be unfit. According to the article which quoted a Harvard professor of psychiatry, 1 out of 10 may be alcoholic, addicted to drugs or senile. Pardon me if I take these statistics with a grain of salt. In fact, let me turn them around a bit. 9 out of 10 psychiatrists may be unfit, judging by some evaluations. Certainly, some studies clearly show that a person's chances of recovery are greater if he never visits a psychiatrist. Let us go one step further. Some years ago, I studied at one of the world's most important universities, both as an undergraduate and as a graduate student. I studied under some of the greatest scholars of the century, and I am grateful for what I gained from them. However, I believe I am being generous when I say that 9 out of 10 were very poor teachers and 7 out of 9 were unfit to teach. However, we have been looking into fields which are fairly good. How about the bureaucracy? I believe it would be generous to say that 9 out of 10 bureaucrats are unfit. Rather, we would have to say that very few of them are worth anything. I'm not trying to be cynical, but merely realistic and honest. An engineer in an aerospace plant once told me that 9 out of 10 engineers were paper shufflers and odd jobs men, but it was the 10th man who had the ability and who created the jobs for all the others. In other words, talent and ability are limited and in scarce supply. We are told that Queen Victoria once complained to Prime Minister Gladstone that there were not many good preachers in the Church of England and she wanted to hear more good pulpiteers. Madam, said the Prime Minister, there are not many good anything. He was, of course, right. There is another angle to this problem. Who determines who is good? Do we set up a bureaucracy in every area to pass judgment and to separate the good from the bad? We have, historically, had a very simple way of eliminating the poorer men. Its name is freedom of choice. If I do not feel that a doctor is qualified, I don't go to him. If a plumber's work is poor, I call another plumber the next time. We make the decisions. Since we are the people to be served, the right of decision belongs to us. If we allow a committee unrelated to us or a bureaucracy to determine fitness, we then surrender a basic power over our lives into their hands. They can then finally say, as was done in the Soviet Union, that we are unfit to be free or even unfit to live. I had an argument with a man on this subject and he lost his temper and told me I was unfit to live. He meant it too. One final word. We have many self-promoting experts who tell us which and how many people are unfit for freedom. This, of course, is what they are really saying when they give us their expert opinions. They distrust freedom for anyone except themselves.